الكريم فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولو العمر منكم and always a reminder for myself and Amdu Qaraji Sadaayi for miskeen wa zaal wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that was still in existence. Alhamdulillah this holy month of Shawwal and the opening of Subhana Mandul Arshi Amma Yasifoon that Allah after the month of Ramadan take the servant in their state of a nuh that Ramadan renders them to be nothing because of Allah's ridha and satisfaction and as a result the souls are moving towards the Divinely Throne and that in the presence of that one everything must be a nothing. Alhamdulillah that this month of Shawwal all these understandings of binary code of on and off of the duality of light of manifesting and non-manifesting and that if you non-manifest you can enter into the reality of the wave and that tariqahs and spiritual paths are about the wave. There is no tariqah based on the state of manifesting that is a zahiri and a external path. The external paths their focus is only on the state of manifestation and the external reality. The internal path, spiritual paths, their whole purpose is to take the student towards their wave reality, the nukh reality, the off and negation of oneself. In all these different ways alhamdulillah these awliyaullah have been inspiring that from every aspect wherever you look at it from a scientist, mathematician, from a spiritualist, from a person who is trying to seek realities in every way they reconfirm the same reality. That as soon as we can efface and bring down our manifestation then spiritual practices open the ability of our duality, the duality of our light and the purpose of our existence is to regain our wave form and to feel the energy through the wave, to receive through the wave reality. So alhamdulillah that Allah guides and whom Allah guides is then truly blessed that He gives them an immense blessing to reach to these realities and to be dressed by these realities. Alhamdulillah that this ocean of immense powers, immense lights, immense blessings and the only way to achieve them is then to harness the reality of our nothingness. And we face an uphill battle in a world that is only about existing and manifesting. By that reality and known alone you prove the existence of shaitan. That if Allah and the Divine wants us to be nothing then how is it in these last days if they're not the last days why is it the state of manifestation has become so strong? where a Facebook comes out and Instagram, TikTok, everything about people having to manifest and even they have nothing and still shaitan makes them to manifest. Means they, they absolutely have no purpose to be manifesting, they have nothing to be teaching, they have nothing of any importance to be sharing. But shaitan is not satisfied with that and shaitan insists that still share yourself, manifest yourself and that becomes then the proof of all these realities, the proof of these dualities, the proof of why people are not able to reach any spiritual reality because of the state of their manifestation. They're manifesting so strong and that shaitan is so much under observation. We said that the light, its duality was based on observation. When nobody observed the light 
the scientist who had the experiment of the duality of light in physics and quantum sciences, when observed the light acted as a particle and went, one, went through one slot. When they stopped observing the light went into a duality like a wave and it went through the two slots. And that was then the whole spiritual understanding for people how to correlate your spiritual path where with what they are at at science now that they understand that this light and all light is based on its observation and that light is reacting to observation that becomes then the key so then shaitan knows that reality so then what does he want he wants you to be observed the more you're observed then the more you're locked into your particle existence. Means that people are locking you by their sight and that's why then spirituality becomes so difficult, so difficult in the last days that everybody wants to say something, everybody wants to share something, everybody wants to manifest something and as a result of that then eyes are looking at them and what you call likes. The people whom are liking it's, a, it's, it's a, a form of observation, means they've observed what you have put out into that world and as a result they're locking people, locking people and they become further and further away from the reality of the wave the reality of non-existence, the reality in which to reach the, the duality of this light that Allah gave to us. So alhamdulillah just a reconfirmation tonight because these are the, the nights of these immense masters of light. Imam Jafar as Sadiq is an immense ocean of sharia of external knowledges but an immense ocean of the spiritual and internal knowledges. And on these nights are the nights that they reconfirm within the heart that just take a path in which to be nothing. And this whole world will ask us to be something. And as much as we can leave the observation of people, as much as we can enter that reality. These teachings then require us to ponder. But the shaykh is saying, don't manifest, don't manifest. That doesn't mean in an open association you hide yourself because you can't hide yourself. Everyone sees that, hey what are you doing over there? So I'm hiding myself. Well now you're manifesting even more. So it means that this is a an understanding within the heart and that I'll apply my, my sense of not manifesting in everything I do. So then we take it now into real life. We wake up in the morning and people are fighting in the home and you get in a confrontation, don't manifest, stay quiet. You don't have to defend your right, you don't have to defend the ego. Unless the, you know they throw a shoe and the shoe hits you, then you, you take precautionary <laughs> actions to, to avoid that. But it means that every step of our day there's a reality of not manifesting. It's not the open showing of, hey, I'm a non-manifesting person in front of people. But it's taking a path in, in which to not react to everything because the reaction itself is the nafs, the ego and the ego is the one whom wants the manifestation. Who becomes angry in your solitude is the ego. So the one whom isolates themselves spiritually, physically, even amongst the crowd khalwat dar anjuman means I'm amongst a people but I go within myself. Then I, I, I openly hide in a corner 
and, and then people know, hey, he's hiding in that corner over there. Then you're now getting the, the attention of people. But to sit in a room with the perfection of manner and the perfection of characters that a sound never comes out of you, that you're, you have a, a, an eloquence and a, and a goodness in your character to be soft, to be quiet, to be observing, to be uh, responsive, that something needs to be done, we do it, the practices have to be done, connecting the heart, meditating. Those are the importance of this state of non-manifestation. Then we go to work, there's issues at work, there's confrontations, again taking the path of humility and not responding, not trying to, to, to give a credit to my nafs and to say something and to reply to something. And so each of us meditate and we understand throughout the day how much this is happening and how much you're able to stay silent and stay quiet until it becomes a continuous state over the person in which the reality of the shaykh is very quiet, that he doesn't talk a lot but everyone around him talks a lot, that he's more comfortable within his own reality. And that was the training is that to be around people, they're talking, they're discussing but the person themselves is going inside in their heart. You're still amongst people but you're not with them like that, you're with your Lord in your heart and in your connection. And that's the training, that's the training is that continuously putting yourself in a position to be around people, not reacting, not laughing loud, not screaming, not, not joking, not doing anything that would call attention to yourself in an inappropriate manner in which to again identify oneself. So those are the realities. The same that we do for work, for family, from home is that taking a path of humil humility, that's, that's what it means to be a nuqt or to take the path of trying to reach to be a nuqt in which continuously bringing the character down, keeping ourselves to be soft-spoken, very quiet. And that's why all the teaching when we were going to other centers that was not the case. Everything was loud, everything was yelling, everything was screaming. When Qur'an itself describes that don't talk loud in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that don't raise your voice. So it means all of these characteristics and adabs these are the adabs of spirituality and the, the path to be nothing, to be quiet, to be humble, that don't react to everything, don't be explosive to everything and that becomes very difficult because of life is faced with continuous, continuous bombardment from every direction. And the more the servant can remain consistent on their path the more that every time they annihilate Allah's dressing them with power. They stay quiet, Allah dresses them with power, Allah dresses them with power. Then these lights and energies that dress upon their soul, these are stations to be achieved. The one who wants to hear, they have to be dressed by these lights from Allah You don't just achieve a state of hearing without an energy and a light being dressed upon the soul. That light was only achieved by their station of humility in which in their path they stayed quiet. Not poking, not jabbering, not talking to everybody nonsense things. The ability to control one's speech is as a result if you can control the talking, you can control when that talking is completely inappropriate. One whom cannot control their mouth, can you imagine the danger of that person? The danger they stand to themselves and to the whole of tariqah, right? Because they can't control their mouth, you don't know when they're going to talk, why they're going to talk and who are they talking to? Are they making up things, saying inappropriate things? So tariqah is based on the whole principle of that reality that I took a path of silence.
thoughts. I took a path in which to observe my heart and to monitor my state and I don't need to say anything because I have nothing to say that's of any importance. And I teach myself that and I teach myself that. And many, many times that, that came and that particular test, we've had many experiences at that center of you talking to the wrong person. You don't know who's, who's been entered into that association in that room and you just jabbering to them and you don't even know what you're saying to these people. And you're like a microphone for someone that you don't want to be a microphone for. So your life is to be silent, quiet, don't give political views, don't give any type of That becomes the same path of humility and as a result they stay quiet, Allah dresses them, Allah dresses them. If they want to achieve, achieve their spiritual vision, Allah has to have dressed them with these lights and these blessings. Any station that they're hoping to achieve, that station can only be achieved by going through the steps. You cannot avoid A, B, C, D and say, no I only want to start from the alphabet from J on. You can't jump the system. Every step of the system is there so that Allah can begin to open the soul. How to open the hearing is a station, how to open the seeing is a station, how to open their, their inspiration in their heart and the different realities and stations that Allah want to dress the servant from if they're not achieving their one, two, three, four, five. It's impossible and then that state becomes farther and farther away. And that becomes the, the reality and that's why in the last days there is no time, there is no time. And all that they're asking for is that take a path of humility, remain silent in your testing, have the best of character so that Allah can dress the servant. When Allah dresses the servant, the light and the energy upon them is sufficient now for their ability to begin to hear. Allah dresses the servant, dresses the servant, laid, qadr, laid means don't, un, don't manifest, Allah dresses power. That becomes then a reality for them then to begin their spiritual vision. So all of these are then steps towards that Divine ocean of power of Allah's rida and satisfaction. And these are from the oceans of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Wa khuluq al azim that Allah immensely, immensely pleased with the overwhelming character and the reality of Prophet and that's the inheritance that Prophet is giving to the, the ashiqeen and the lovers of this Divine reality that come with the best of character, come with, with whose foundation is of goodness and softness and all of the characteristics of saintly, saintliness so that one day Allah inshaAllah to fulfill that covenant and to dress us from that blessing. So imagine that if we don't do step one, two, three, how other dressings can come to somebody? One who cannot control their mouth, how can Allah send any guidance into their heart or any inspiration? Don't you have a term, loose lips sink ships? Yeah, the army teaches people that and that's the army. What does that reality mean? Means that you're asking Allah to be a custodian of heavenly realities. Well those realities are secret until Allah wants them to be known. And their secrets, many of them are secrets because they can confuse the state of people. Ilm al wa hikmati bi salihin are two wings that Allah gives to those guided individuals that I give you from ilm al I give you from my Divinely and heavenly oceans of knowledge 
But I must also give to you ilm al aduni wa hikmati bi salihin that I have to give you the wisdom of pious servants because this knowledge you have is an is a immense weapon. And if you're just throwing it out because your lips are loose, well imagine then the confusion you could cause, the difficulty coming and telling somebody who's not yet ready for a, a level of knowledge, not at anywhere of an understanding and you throwing left and right information to people. Then you can imagine the amount of confusion, the amount of difficulty. It's not something just thrown out, it's something that comes as an immense treasure safeguarded within the heart. And then Allah takes the servant to be from Salihin, that in their righteousness and piousness their heart is like a fine-tuned instrument. They can tune their heart with the audience and the vibration of the audience begins to send a signal to that heart of what it's in need of of understanding. And as a result then the knowledges and informations can be sent out based on the audience, not based on the level of the shaykh. The shaykh's not speaking at his level, he's speaking at your level your capacity to understand the knowledges they're going to convey. So that's, that's the reality. If you throw too much information then it can begin to confuse and disorient people on their path and becomes now something of a blessing then became something more of a torment. So then this whole path is based on an immense discipline. Those disciplines have to be put into effect before anyone can go anywhere. So before anyone thinks, oh this must be a pious person, that guy's a pious this guy. No, you have to first go through all the steps. You shouldn't think anyone is of that piety because you should be thinking they're all supposed to be silent. The one talking is not showing that he's, he's a pious person because he talks a lot. The pious one is the one whom is quiet and drawn within their own reality trying to find themselves and find their own characteristics and their ailments. So it means the spiritual path is based on these realities. And that's why the, the state of perfection, when you see the students in a state of perfection they're very quiet. They're drawn within their heart and their characteristics continuously monitoring themselves for the characteristics and the flaws they have and the reactions they have into the conditions outside and all around them in a continuous state of observation. As a result Allah doesn't need for them to be observed by angels to hold and lock them as a particle. But when the state is immature and they're not able to handle the inheritance of duality that they can't be given their trust to be a wave, Allah locks them in their particle. And that the angels observe them and as a result their state is locked. But spirituality and tariqah and naqshbandiyya its whole reality is the wave. So particle people they have no value for the shaykh. So that's why the shaykhs are teaching and teaching and teaching that you have to leave the particle state, you have to take this path, go through its steps, isolate control the tongue, control the character. As a result Allah will see the maturity in the servant and begin to inspire them, you don't need to be under observation of the angels because you are mature enough to observe yourself. You don't let yourself go. I don't know if it's being conveyed properly but whatever the tongue falls short on that understanding we should try to meditate, that when people are asking for things to open that is a, a, is a deep understanding that if you take your life and your path serious and that you audit yourself appropriately at all times that, did I speak too much, did I say too much, did I raise my voice, did I do something that would displease Allah and then continuously go back into your heart to reconfirm with the shaykh and the connection that you have that shows a state of maturity. 
and that this one is observing themselves, they're not heedless. Imagine like in the UK there's a police station with 10,000 cameras and they have a camera on every corner and you're sitting there picking your nose on the camera and you think that these police are not watching you <laughs> and whatever you do they're watching you. So, I mean to be vigilant of ourself is a state of maturity that of course Allah is watching me, of course Prophet is watching me, the angels are watching me, my shaykhs are watching me. I have to be watching myself. When I watch myself and I respect myself and I say that I have to control, I can't be playing with shaitan while he's doing this and I'm doing this and my character has just gone completely out of control. Everything has to be immediately that you can regain yourself, control yourself, hold yourself, go wash, go meditate, bring yourself back. So that enough times into which Allah looks to the servant and says that they are mature and that they are observing themselves strictly and as a result of observing themselves begin to release their observation. As a result they can observe themselves and Allah begin to release their wave reality. The releasing of their wave reality <coughs> allows them the communication in the world of light. Everything is a communication through the world of light. That in your wave reality your, your light is moving and communicating with everything. Allah Ulum al awwaleen wa akhireen in which they describe the knowledges of the beginning and the knowledges of the end. Oh because in the world of light there's no time. So where's the beginning and where's the end if there's no time? They can enter into that state of light in which all knowledges are in that depository. And in that state of light everything can be communicated. We've described before that they send their light onto animals and they have a communication with the animals, with the vegetation, with the plants, animate and inanimate objects all are in a state of praise in their light reality. There's nothing, nothing that you see on this earth and not see that is not in an existence by its praise and that's what they call string theory their atomic reality, everything has an atomic reality. That bookcase is manifesting with a particular resonance. It's a sound vibration that makes the bookcase in the center to appear as a bookcase. That has a sound, it has a resonance. If you move from your light and your wave, your light enters into that and understands its resonance. So the immensity of the world of light is something that can't be understood. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these lights, these realities and from these immense masters of the way, their inheritance for us and <clears throat> the immensity of what Allah has given as an inheritance that you have access to them by virtue of being in their tariqah and as a result they allow you to connect your heart with them because you're from them, you're in their tariqah. We described before that we don't know the gift that Allah gave to us where others may try to connect with them but have no permission. And those whom Allah granted to be from them means then they, they have a responsibility to overlook us. Imam Jafar as Sadiq is in the golden chain is been placed there by Prophet to deposit from his reality and the secret that he carries into the shajar, into the chain. And as a result of that anyone who does their madad and connect and connect their hearts they can ask to be connected to Imam Jafar as Sadiq and to be dressed by his fires, to be under the nazar of his holy fires and that his uloom and knowledge is to reach to the hearts and to dress us. That alone and all these realities alone is enough for us to be grateful for lifetimes 
and to show our gratefulness to Allah of the immensity of what He has given as a gift and to want with all our being what Allah has given to us and not to be distracted by what we're asking for but, but thank for Allah, thanking Allah for what we have been given inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha.